Ladies and gentlemen, the Fourth Amendment Secure in One's Property Program. We are putting together just a motion template for that group. We have told everybody that there is no law requiring anyone in the United States to have a driver's license unless they're traveling in interstate commerce because there is no law giving anyone the authority to regulate the people. Go ahead. I dare you to find one. Don't talk about statutes. Don't talk about no regulations. Don't talk about no ordinances. Don't talk about none of that junk. Congress was only authorized, supposedly, to make law. Let me uh, show that to you before we go on. Then we'll talk about this stuff in a moment. Wake up. First Amendment, United States Constitution. Stop listening. I want you all to pay attention to the Constitution, uh, well, <laughs> what they call the Constitution. The First Amendment provides that Congress, uh-oh, it came back on. Let's uh, permanently seal it so it don't bother me no more. Hold on now. Let's get back to that top portion. Congress, uh-oh, it did it again. Hold on, ladies and gentlemen, that's wrong. Congress makes no law respecting the establishment of religion or prohibiting its free exercise to protect the freedom of speech? No, that's not what it says. So let's go ahead and read it. I don't want the... Let's do this one right here. Congress shall make no law. Ladies and gentlemen, Congress was never supposed to be making law. But because it says Congress shall make no law, it is presumed that only Congress gets to make the law. Why? Because this says respecting the establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the rights to the freedom of speech or abridging the rights to freedom of the press or abridging the right of the people to peacefully assemble or abridging the rights of the people to petition government for redress of grievance. They are strictly prohibited from doing so. Now, hold on. Because this says Congress shall make no law, it is presumed that Congress has the right to make no law. No, this Congress shall make no law was respecting these things. Now, hold on. Let's go back to the other one. This one says the Bill of Rights. So all of these go together, ladies and gentlemen. Now, this stops at 9, but it's 10. Uh, it was supposed to be 13. But they got rid of the other ones because they weren't worth it, uh, incorporating. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, these are not part of the Bill of Rights. See, that's why it says letter amendments. Most of these were not enacted by the people. Now, hold on. Make sure you understand. Each one of these were ratified by the people, not by Congress. Well, Congress did ratify them. That's right, but the people had a say-so in each one of these. That's why they've never been touched. Nobody has ever tried to amend a single one of these rights. Why? Because if they did, the whole nation has to vote on these amendments. Just go back and do your research. Now it says the Bill of Rights became law in 1791. Actually, yeah, that's not actually true, but we'll let them believe that. But please understand, the Bill of Rights is the Constitution. This other junk is not the Constitution. Okay? That is, none of this was ratified by the people. Okay, look, congressional pay raises. The people didn't vote on that. The people did not vote on the majority of this junk here. The people did vote on this. They sent their representatives back and said, hey, this is the way things are going to be. And the representatives took that back, and by popular vote, those amendments were enacted. All right, enough of that. But as we said, when you look at the First Amendment, the first thing the First Amendment says, Congress shall make no law. Second Amendment says prohibiting a well-regulated 
militia. Remember, we're still dealing with prohibiting free exercise there, freedom of speech, or the press, or of this, or of that, and a well, blah, 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 a soldier, Congress shall make no law. And then it tells you what the military can't do. Then it says, prohibiting the right of the people to be secure in their person, houses, persons, possessions, things, effects, blah, 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 and prohibiting the fact that no person shall be held and in all, blah, 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 blah. These all go together. Ladies and gentlemen, now all we did, now pay attention, here's the number one thing about driver's licenses. The enumeration of the Constitution of certain rights shall not be construed to deny or disparage others retained by the people. You have the right to travel. They can't deny you that right to travel. They can't create regulations prohibiting your right to travel in private commerce, not public commerce, private commerce. You have the right to engage in commerce privately. So if you want to go to the store, you have that right to go to the store. If you want to purchase something at the store, you have the right to purchase something at the store. They can't make a law saying you can't purchase this, you can't purchase that. However, hold on now, they created a law that says, hey, if it interferes with their commerce and their interstate commerce, mm -hmm, they can make a law. And I'm going to say that that seems fair. But state of, of my private business, now let's do this because y'all need to see this, get rid of this. Ladies and gentlemen, the powers not delegated to the United, by the United States Constitution nor prohibited to it by the states are reserved to the states respectively or to the people. They don't have any right to regulate your private. Pay attention, travel, your private commerce. That is your right. You retain that right. You ever hear all rights reserved? Well, this is where that comes from, people. The Tenth Amendment reserves your rights. And you want to retain them? This is the one that retains your rights. Okay? You have secured rights. That's what the Constitution does. It secures your rights. You see how this thing goes? State rights? Pay attention. The people. The people. It's not just state rights. It's your rights. And you need to start exercising. Because you, you don't look too fit when it comes to your rights. Yeah, it looks like you've been getting stepped on, so you're going to have to do some exercise and, you know, build up the muscles uh, because them rights need to be exercised. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's get back to the conversation. This is perplexity. Perplexity.ai. Perplexity.ai, this is the question. United States v. Brown. 1966, United States v. Brown. Go look it up. Research it. Now, it's going to be hard to find because they've been, they've been hiding that junk. Anyway, this case involved a challenge by the federal government to the state of Mississippi. What, what, what was going on in Mississippi? Well, Mississippi has refused to require driver's licenses for their, their, their people. But look, intrastate commercial drivers. The Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals held that it did not require the states to license drivers in interstate, intrastate, intra within the state, interstate between the states, intra within the state, as the act's purpose was to promote construction of highways and not to regulate drivers' qualifications. That was what I put in there. So this is what perplexity answers. The case of the United States v. Brown, blah, 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 involved a challenge to the federal government to the state of Mississippi, refusal to require driver's license for interstate and trust state commercial drivers. The Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals held that the federal government did not require state licensed drivers for intrastate travel, as the purpose of the relevant act was to promote the construction of highways, not to regulate the qualifications of the drivers. Unfortunately, how pay attention, couldn't find the full text of the case to provide more why why can't you find the full text of the case hold on let's go talk to chat hey chat 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 chat, chat gpt got a question for you you ready for it we can go to this one because i had to ask the question twice to make sure he was on point because he changed the dates of things he changed this to 76 to throw me off ladies and gentlemen see and not 76 and that's exactly what i pointed out because he said uh 
76. And so I corrected him. So he gives me the case number again. And he talks about the challenges. But I want you all to pay attention to something because it's very important that you pay attention. There is a word that this court uses when it explains the stupid act and when Congress came up with the stupid act. Give me one second. I, no, this is not the one. Do I have to go all the way up? Yeah, I have to go all the way up, y'all, to find. So let me pause, y'all. Oh, that's Natalie Cole. You know, I probably did hear that Natalie Cole passed away in 2015. Um, yeah, she had a uh, disorder that literally affected her heart and the right valve and all of that stuff. I did read up on it today. Kind of sad because I like Natalie a lot. Okay, she she un unforgettable and inseparable. I mean, it's just so many songs. Bye bye, Natalie. That's my girl. Okay, y'all hold on. I just want to prove to you guys we're going to use this case right here and this one. We're going to show you something you should understand, because I've been saying it, that when traveling on a highway, they're pulling you over because they're regulating commerce. This case involved a challenge to the regulation of intrastate trucking by the Interstate Commerce Commission. The court held that the Interstate Commerce Commission jurisdiction only extends to interstate commerce and therefore could not regulate intrastate commerce trucking. Ladies and gentlemen, it was the Commerce Clause that Congress brought this under. Pay attention. This case addressed the issue whether the states could impose tolls on interstate highways without violating the Commerce Clause. The courts held that such tolls were permissible as they were not discretionary or discriminatory and did not disproportionately burden interstate commerce. The courts distinguished United States Brown by emphasizing that the case only applied to federal regulations and not the state regulations that did not burden interstate commerce. Y'all need to understand, that's the only jurisdiction they get for licensing, because licensing requires contract. Licensing requires contract. You're going to have to do your research, people, because I cannot go in and speak for you in court. You're going to have to understand this, that the application for a driver's license bring it to the court bring a copy from the dmv show how it asks you to sign under penalty of perjury and that you will abide by them laws and everything okay that's a contract people that means you have to agree and it does say i i i i i all throughout that document so the fact that it's a contract government cannot impede the obligation of contract nor can they force you to contract to exercise a right you need to understand that. That's why that's the first thing you bring in there, and you just ask them, where's the jurisdiction? No, 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 no. Excuse me. <laughs> it seems like you're opening and closing your mouth. I didn't ask you for your opinion. I asked you for the jurisdiction. Where's the proof? Where's the pudding? Where's the beef? Where's the beef? I'm sorry, 1980s. Where's the beef? Because guess what, ladies and gentlemen? They don't have anything. They can't show you a single law requiring you. They can show you statutes. They can show you those, what do you call those, regulations and those, those codes. They can show you that junk, but they can't show you a law. Now, I'm going to say this last thing. This is going to be the last thing I say. So if you don't pay attention to anything you've heard me say, pay attention to this. The First Amendment to the Constitution for the United States of America says Congress shall make no law. So it is presumed that Congress can make law. There is no provision in the Constitution allowing Congress to make statutes and or, pay attention, regulations and or, pay attention, codes that apply to the people. Yeah, they can do it for interstate commerce, but they can't do it for you, telling you what your rights are. Go back and pay attention. A statute, a code, a revised statute, those are not laws. Congress doesn't enact that junk. They can only enact a law. They cannot enact a statute or a code. You need to understand, they were only authorized to enact law. If you don't believe me, go back and read the law. Hey, gotta go. Y'all take care. Goodbye.